everybody. Welcome. Another edition, Knowles 247 X's and Knowles video series. I'm here with my guys. I'm here with my friends, Coach Adam Brown, Kevin Little, and we are going to be breaking down the first new film of 2023. That's right. The ever important, the highly influential tour of duty workouts. Our boys were there bright and early this morning. I believe it was the last tour of duty workout before spring ball kicks in. That starts on Monday. The news is going to be flowing fast and heavy. We're going to have football film to break down. Spring games just around the corner. Recruiting is taken off. Adam is thanking the heavens. It's mana raining down. So this is the perfect time. Knowles 24-7. They're having a nice little uh, nice little promo. 50% off. That's half slashed in half. prices. What? One, two, three, four, half. Cut in half, 50% off for the entire year for an annual subscription. It is worth it, especially if you have kids, just for the Paramount Plus access. Rubble and Crew, the spinoff of Paw Patrol's delightful television. Your kids will love it, 50% <laughs> off, Knowles 24-7. And I guess as a side, besides like the cute little Canadian uh, AI-generated uh, utility dogs, you also get the best FSU coverage of the entire beat. Recruiting scoop, video content. T scoop blah 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 you get it all just sign up now please just sign up now just sign up love you sign up anyway speaking of hot fire Kevin you were actually there this morning for that nice little tour of duty workout what did you think general impressions obviously also as we're talking we're gonna have the video on in the background while we play it and then when something grabs us we're gonna kind of like interject and jump in and think if it's something that you need to know as the viewer but Kevin what were your overall impressions yeah, so let me let me get the the film pulled up. Yes, um, Kevin, what did you think about the Underwear Olympics? The Underwear Olympics, unfortunately, <laughs> um, I guess uh, there's Kanaya Charlton. Um, yeah, very flexible, sixty nine. Yeah, he's he's he. That's <laughs> At, whoops. That's what he's bringing to the table. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it was good. I think uh, the level of athleticism has has taken a step, another step forward. Um, uh, I think last year, the staff when the staff brings in these transfers, they they really do stand out. Like last last season, Johnny Wilson stepped on and he he looked different uh, than than a lot of a lot of what you had on the roster. And now like Jaheim Bell's out there and he he's kind of that same mm -hmm. level of athlete. I mean, I, I remember, um, I remember last season watching Georgia play, and I was like, well, Georgia has. 11 guys on each side of the ball that all look like Johnny Wilson that all look different. Right. Like, uh, and I think you're starting to see more and more of that on the roster. Uh, Jaheim Bell's an obvious one, one to point out, but um, a lot of guys really started to look the part and a lot of newcomers were, were really impressive. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the drill they did for the most part on this side of the field. Um, it's a it's a pretty basic conditioning drill, right? Like moving, uh, being able to get off the ground quickly and get to the next spot. And really, it's just a conditioning drill. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of hard to, to get too many takeaways. But I, I think there are some things that everybody was able to see. And I think um, the the newcomers that really shined, and in, in my opinion, the two biggest ones were probably Jaheim Bell, like I said, and I think. Uh, Kenton Kirkland looked. Oh really, yeah, you talked about him in the group chat a lot. You're a big fan of his. Uh, he looked really good, very impressive. Ooh, it's really hard to man. see that huddle and like translate it to what he looks like next to D1 college athletes, but mm -hmm. he really shined. And I'm with you too, Kevin. As far as like extrapolations, that's even for more like the spring ball when the pads get on. I am interested. And I do think there is um, value in looking at those new guys, like those transfers, those new freshmen, how they're integrating to this really, really like well-founded culture that Mike Norvell has. Because the talk about Florida State's approach, how many transfers can you pump in? How sustainable is it? Will there be upheaval between the, the guys who have been there homegrown and the guys that you bring in that are trying to take their spots? And at least from everything that I've heard, it looks like the culture is still like it's rock solid, which is good. That That's what I was worried about. Adam, you're a coach. You've been through these like pre these pre spring conditioning stuff. What are you looking for? Is it just effort culture? Like, well, what are these coaches trying to foster right now with a team that's got a lot of expectations on it for next year? Yeah. It's all about my, you're trying 
to craft mindsets and create different, you know, create mindsets for these guys and mm -hmm. get them to strain, get them to push, get them to find that last ounce of energy that they can on every play. Like the physical stuff is great and all that. Like, oh, we brought Bless Harris. Bless looks a little, looks a little heavy in the belly. I don't know. They've tried to bulk him up. <laughs> Maybe you want to work him at, you know, on the interior a little bit more. This stuff's all great. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's foundational stuff for your program. Um, you know, Mike talks about it all the time. I mean, this is how they're this is how they're developing the mindset for the season. This is how they're cra this is how they craft each team. Uh, it, it comes on these these mornings uh, before spring ball is going to get started. I'm trying to watch these. I'm trying to watch these guys too. As I'm as I'm thinking here, Duke Cooper yeah, there so. supposedly gained 15 pounds. Got to play a little safety. Um, yeah, so Cooper Cooper looked good doing some safety drills on the other side of the field that you unfortunately won't won't be able to see here. But um, take Kevin's word for it. Yeah, he, he he's looking good in that movement to safety. Here's Kirkland right next to Jerry and Jones. Here you can see this, his length here. Kind of what you're getting. There's Fintrell Cypress also. I mean, looked really smooth. A lot yeah. of these DB, you can see the athleticism, but. You know, no one cares if you're the ath most athletic person in the world that that can't cover. They all look Wendy. fluid. It looks like fluid athleticism, and obviously, like they've done this drill a million times at this point. But there was a lot of dude, and, and the guy, the new guys that came in, they said Cypress was like highly conditioned. There's no, there wasn't too much like extreme culture shock from these guys. They were told what it was going to be like when they were getting recruited by Mike Norvell and crew. And they showed up, Kevin. What do you, what what was more striking to you? Size, size, speed. Like, why did they look so much different than they have in in, in recent years past? Uh, I would say body composition. So, okay. uh, uh, not necessarily that they're all bigger. More that like, okay. So uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see him very clearly, but uh, Daryl Jackson. He just looks different, right? He's built mm -hmm. differently than what you think of as a nose tackle, right? When you're thinking of a, of a one technique, you think of someone who's big and kind of, sh you know, shaped like Robert Cooper, right? Like a, a doorstop of a person that just kind of clogs up the middle. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, even for the offensive linemen, it, it feels like it's less of these guys are just big because they need to be big and more right. like they've been able to replace a lot of the 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 fat they've had on their bodies with muscle and kind of turn that size into functional size. That's a good point. Yeah. There's there's my guy. He's with the A group here. Um, see the length. I mean, you get this chance to see how long this dude is. Yeah, that's so that's why I like so Quindarius Jones. He's he's a three star, true freshman. Uh, here he's number sixteen in the front. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we didn't think he was number ninety, Kev. I, I he's working with the A group here, so this is um, other starting cornerbacks that he's competing against. Um, and uh, sure, he got well, the right group. I think that was a little bit of sarcasm there, big guy. <laughs> I think it's like him and a couple long snappers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, he's long. I, I like Quindarius Jones just because I mean the the kid's six foot two and runs around like a like a cornerback. Um, I think he still has some ways to go. I think a lot of the like clean turn he, he's missing kind of the cleanliness that uh a lot of the returners and even so this is watch this is kirkland here this is the other true freshman this is the guy that i think um which number a 24 here in the middle 24. okay he's got uh, a sprinter he's got a sprinter's background it makes a lot of sense that he's gonna be that he's gonna look fluid in this stuff Right. So he looks very fluid. I think you're missing that with Quindarius Jones a little bit, right? That's the difference. So, but the frame is there. You can, it is like, it, it, I think this is, this is very helpful for the viewer, for the listener, because all the articles on Knowles 24 7, 50% off annual subscription, sign up now, emphasize the length, 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 mm -hmm. length. This is what that looks like. Yeah. Like, that's Kirkland. He's so long. He's he's gonna be the guy that people talk about that comes out and it, he's gonna be the a, Az Thomas of this this spring in my opinion. He's gonna be the one like, oh, this four star is good. You know, yeah, shocked. You know, the, the evals. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm with you, Adam. You've you've seen the film. You've read the reports. Mm -hmm. What was the most encouraging report to you? Was it was it something general? Was it a specific player? What what when you read made you go, hmm, big man likes. 
I, I think the first thing was Jeremiah Byers, Rod. I'm not surprised and by that. Keandre Jones, that those three kind of have been standing out to Mike Norvell because they've got to be better on the offensive line. Like, I, a lot of praise has been heaped that direction. Like, they've still got a ways to go to be good. Um, so, I think those are three big pieces that are going to need to be able to step in potentially all three starters for you, um, step in there and to continue to push that group uh, and elevate their elevate their ceiling. So I, I, I was really pleased. There's a, a picture going around of Casey Roddick. I mean, he looks like a flipping grown man, <laughs> which he is a grown man, but he's just rocked up, like looks, looks really impressive. I was happy to see that. Need him to step in at center or guard and really kind of run with it to replacing um, Dylan Gibbons. Jeremiah Byers has been praised and all kinds of, you know, hype kind of poured on him and what he can be. It's been, it was great to see him moving around. He looks really agile, he really does. explosive getting off the ground. Um, and then Keandre Jones looks like he slimmed down a little bit, actually, which that's a good story. Team, yeah. Yeah. When we watched the team from Auburn, we thought he looked a little overweight. So if he has slimmed down, uh, and, and like I said, Mike Norvell was, was complimentary of him. So, that's a good thing. It's another body for you on the interior. That's a spot where I think they needed to get better. Um, and if all three of those guys hit, that's a big piece for your offense. I they, agree. Uh, they zoomed in on him here. This guy yeah, the, running the, around the, the hoop. Th- this dude, this is my guy. Um, this is the one I'm going to talk about all year. Who's that? I, I think he's going to change everything about the defense, Daryl Jackson. Well, that's I a six foot six, man. like 280, 90, 300 something odd man. I, I I love Robert Cooper. He was a great player. Unfortunately, he battled a lot of injuries, especially with like his shoulder and stuff like that. What Daryl Jackson can do as a defensive uh, run stopper and, and eating double teams as a nose tackle is just different. I mean, he plays with such great leverage. He's so powerful. There's Gilbert Edmond right there. I like to see him. Looks like a big SEC type body. But back to Jackson. I mean, he's just going to eat double teams. He's not going to get moved out of the point of attack. You're not digging him out of there. Ooh, Boots is struggling a little bit. Um, Newcomer acclimating to yeah, a very, very difficult conditioning program. But like you said. Ooh, I think this is the one where Daniel Lyons throws up. Um, <laughs> you catch that on video? <laughs> uh, they cut it, I think. Oh, okay. NSFW. Um, I like that, though. Those guys you're talking. They came in, developed, ready to go. We want to give the viewer, Kevin, a a well-rounded view of the program and obviously everything, a lot of things look better because the team is better. Anything that concerned you, anything that you looked at and you said, Hmm, that's something they got to clean up. Anything that stood out to you? I'm not going to say negative, but needs improvement. Um, I, I think position group those, maybe, or I think any sort of concern like that would, would be directed at, at specific players and, um, that's probably not fair, fair, fair to dive too deep into just based that's off, fair. off these um, mat drills. Um, don't want to put that like, narrative out on them. That's fine. Um, any any of those people that are in your head that you're thinking of right now that are projected to be leaned on very heavily, a very um, instrumental in the team success that you're thinking of? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I okay. think that you know maybe there's some some newcomers that that need a little bit longer than than we were expecting. Um, maybe with, with them coming in and, and maybe there's, there's one or two returners that, you know, probably aren't in the best shape, but it, it, for the most part, that, that's stuff that, that, that can be fixed. And I think that I don't want that narrative to dissuade from the fact that I think all of these guys look really well prepared in general and the overall athleticism and pre- preparedness of the players is, has moved up since last season. That's the story that the, I'm, I'm with you that, the composition of the bodies, composition of the roster, the the professionalism, the preparedness. I'm with you. That's the story. It is good to say that it's not a finished product. Uh, Adam, what I mean, if you had to put like this team in a final form right now, like let's say right before game one against LSU, they're 100 percent of their final form. Like what what percentage is this team at right now? Like how much do they like realistically have to improve from like a coaching level when oh, people geez. when people are like chopping this thing up? Like, I mean, they're I don't know. I I don't even know how to answer that question. I they haven't they haven't even had a practice yet. So I mean, I would say they're at zero percent. Like they're 
they're obviously getting themselves in shape, which is a big part of this. They're crafting their mindset, you know, so whatever percent you feel like having the right attitude and right That's character and right chemistry here. when you get out to the field is, it is I, I don't know what kind of number you'd put on that. Um, but it, it, infancy, this team yeah. is in its very infancy. Very, right now. yeah, extremely. Yeah. Like they haven't, they haven't had a single practice yet. Oh, uh, they, well, I'll say that they, they've been able, there are some things that they're able to do. Um, I believe after their, their workouts where they're able to go out with like tennis balls and stuff like that and, and do work or to some, to some degree, they're able to get out and kind of do some drills and stuff like that or some install, I believe. Um, so it, it's very young. This is a very, still a very, they're not young, but they're young in this season of developing this team for this year. Um, you know, finding all these pieces and how they're going to fit. There are a lot of new transfers. They've got to get, they look great running around out here. How well are they going to get out and communicate? How well is Casey Roddick going to communicate with Robert Scott if they're together on the left side? Mm-hmm. You know, we love seeing Hakeem Williams run around out here. Yeah, there where's he is. He, where's he fit into this into this piece of the pie? That we know there's battles at the at some of the tackle spots on, on offense. How are all these defensive linemen going to fit together? How's Adam Fuller? How's Adam Fuller going to uh, use all of them? We don't we don't know these answers yet. So, yeah, they, they're very young as far as where this thing's all going to get to. Which I think is even more positive because the overwhelming majority of like, these guys look ready to go. These guys look ready to go. There's not too many yeah. um, conditionings rough body. You know, we could be, you know, some bad weight to lose. Like those are few and far between. And those people that are having some issues right now, there's so much time for all that to get corrected that I'm with you, man. Like even uh, I feel very positive about all this, Kevin, well, as far as back a little bit, Kev, go back oh, did a you bit. see something, Adam? Well, I, I feel like th- this is one I kind of saw making its rounds today. I came here. People are like, oh, he's dogging it. He's not working hard. I don't think people understand how flippant hard these guys have worked this entire, like the context from in these videos gets stripped. Yeah, this um, is this is about 45 minutes and them just doing that drill we were watching. Yeah, straight, over, so. and I've seen over, some people like over. I've seen some people like, oh, look, he's dogging it. Some flipping Yahoo from uh, from Florida put something out there like he's dogging it. Like, get the hell out of here. It, hey, it could he just be can, a true freshman tired from the very end of one of the most difficult like, conditioning on, programs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kevin, you saw Hakeem Williams. What did you? any issues there. I mean, a true freshman, extremely talented wide receiver going through his first college conditioning program. Are you concerned since you were primarily had your eye on the DBs and the wide receivers? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I think that <laughs> when you're watching these things and, and you go to these, these camps, it's not about how good of conditioning are they in right this second or mm. it's really more just, okay, how do they fit in compared like when you have newcomers right when you have Kyle Morlock who's only played against division two guys what does he look like sitting next to a team full of power five football players right. you know yeah. what does Jaheim Bell look like on a Florida State what what are these guys what does Lucas Simmons look like next to actual offensive well, he line he's he's a big dude he looks different right so some of these guys Jeremiah Byers, how does he move in space, right? These these things aren't tangible football things, but they give an indication. It's like last season when we saw AZ Thomas. You look at him and you're like, all right, he's got the build. It doesn't mean he's going to be a good DB. He probably has some work he needs to do to get to that level. But seeing him a, around other talent is, is, is a big deal. And I think for me, like Daryl Jackson, number 14 here on the, on the right side in white, coming back that's a wide dude standing next to other dudes he's a big dude right yeah. so he's like, right next to, he's right next to briggs and it's just i'm i'm with you just the eye test of this stuff that's what i think is valuable because right now we've been conceptually talking about how this guy fits into this and how this guy fits into this and we've been looking at south carolina highlights and shorter highlights and all this well guys they're standing right next to each other and the dude standing to his right or left, that newcomer, you know how they performed last year. So it's a good gauge, man. I, I'm mm-hmm. with you. And I think so far it passes the eye test for me. Kevin, were there any like aha moments, whether it was like an individual player performance in a drill, a cultural moment, a coaching moment, anything that like stood out to you that you will be taking back like into our analysis um, from this morning? 
Uh, I, I wouldn't say that necessarily. I, I think that mostly what I'm taking from it is, is just, uh, I mean, I've been to several practices, so nothing, nothing that they did or, or coaching, coaching styles really surprised me more than just, well, now I know I'm going to really keep my eye on if KJ Kirkland can kind of pick up the intricacies, intricacies of the position. Cause we've been talking about needing depth at safety and he could be yeah. that depth. Um, he, he looks that good out there. When I saw him, I did not know he was a true freshman, right? I had to f- remember who that, that was. Um, how, how, how good do these guys look? I think right. you're Can seeing back a little bit and pause one more, a little bit more. Look, no, go back a little bit more. This is Cyprus running the drill, right? Yeah, well, I, I'm looking for the Dante Anderson clip where he screws up. I think it might be after this. Yeah, that's Ventral Cypress. I mean, let's look how smooth he is. Like, there's <laughs> he's working his tail off, and it's like, yeah, cool. no, it doesn't this, even need the power aid. Yeah. Is this, uh, that's Kirkland. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. This guy, he's, I mean, standing next to Cypress, he's got a few inches on him. He kind of looks the part immediately as as a true freshman, right? So this is someone you want to keep your eye on. It, it would be nice because it was a DB class this past one from the high school ranks that was maligned by some. And I think as far as like the general level of DB talent at Florida State, I get where a lot of the criticism is coming for. If you could get some gems out of that class, like that with, with how we expect recruiting at that position to improve going forward, That'd be nice, man. That'd be nice to get some contributors and some and some some pieces of the puzzle from that class. Keep going back. Contribute on. early. Keep going back. Keep going. Looking for ninety six. Keep going. What did he just like? Did he go the wrong way, Adam? Like what happened? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. There, oh, there he is. We have like one more clip. So he he's running this. He's running this through, over the cones or over the bags and hoop drill he goes on the wrong side of the coach they make him do it again yep and you see him he's like holy man. i mean he's exhausted he's working his freaking tail off and they they're having none of it like that's what this is about right there yep Mental the little tough, things though. developing developing good habits like following coaching when you're exhausted being able to think on your feet when you're exhausted like that that encapsulates entirely what tour of duty is about right there like that's that a good one little clip that's a good point because Adam asked. And a nobody coach, will talk about that, though, but that's nobody will talk. That's not going to be a single, you're not going to read a single article anywhere where anybody's like, that's what it is. Like, that, that's good because what this is, obviously, like, you're not going to be jumping over bags in a game. You're not going to be running around no, at the end of the I, game. But at the end of the day, at the game, you're going to be dog ass tired. Mm-hmm. You're going to have an assignment. You're going to have to play the right technique. You're going to have to, like, do the right motion and technique on a stunt, something like that. And when your brain is totally fried, when you're running on fumes, when your muscles are filled with lactic acid, you have to do the right thing. And it could be the difference between a win and a loss. So it looks like he went on the right side of the cone. He should have gone on the left. That is trying to prepare you for end of the game, goal to go situation. Yeah. You need to do this specific thing and you need to be cognizant of it when you're tired, right? Yeah, I mean, think, think of the games they lost this year. They lost to NC State in the second half. They, they lost to Clemson in, in an eight minute stretch. Like those little, those little moments, like you have to be prepared for them and, and you're straining and there's adversity. Like they created adversity for that young man. Did he get back up and probably go again? I bet he did. I bet he did because that's that's what they've created through things like this. And that's what that's the greatest takeaway of this video for me. Not DJ Lundy looking a little slimmer or I was about Quindarius to talk about Jones, DJ Lundy looking Quindarius slimmer. Darius Jones being here, tall but... and long, like that right there, that that's it for me creating adverse moments that they have to respond to in February. In March, it yeah. doesn't just have to be with the pads on in the middle of a game. Get them ready for that type of stuff because it's all about response and in dealing with being uncomfortable, right? Well, and there's expectations now, so there's there's pressure. The moment, and they always are trying to create pressure, but there's more pressure this year than there has been for this team and this program for Mike Norvell for these players. There, there's an expectation for them finally now of winning something 
something of uh, of, of, of magnitude, like something yeah. of significance. And these little things right there, like if you let those slide, and they never have, I'm not trying to imply that they ever have, but yeah, if I they let those slide, those are going to show up in, in important moments during your season. Not allowing them to slide now is just going to help this team, which they've got better talent, they've got better players, they've got more pieces that look like they belong. The, those moments are just going to go a long way. As every parent knows, it, <laughs> it, it is a game of picking and choosing your battles. But you know, and I know that if you're a parent, you can think of, mm -hmm. I don't want to address this, but I know that if I don't, it's going to cause a problem for me in the future. Yep. And you buckle up and you just get down to business. It's the same type of thing, man. Nip it in the bud now. Yep. Instill the mindset, instill the culture, even in a kid like Dante Anderson, who has been there for a while. I agree with you. It's very representative of what this whole thing is about. Kevin, have you been to a tour? Was this your first tour duty workout that you got to see? No, I, I went to one last year. A um, any difference? Did you notice? Obviously, the the caliber of player, size, body composition. We hit all that. Difference in like energy level, execution, the way that they were running it. Are they running it differently with expectations heightened or no? Uh, I would say every year that I've seen with the Norvell staff, there's been a little bit more accountability between players. So there's players oh, okay. picking each other up. Um, uh, that's, that's a hard thing to quantify. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I would say that there was a, there was a lot of good leadership here. There were a lot of kids that you might not think of as traditional leaders on this team. Like, like Travis J was directing people and, and helping lead the younger guys through Love drills that. Love it's like, you know, this guy's not a not someone you would think of as as a leader on the team because he's not necessarily your biggest player. But, you know, you see the guys that have been within the program kind of encouraging and uplifting other guys. And um, I mean, it's just a sign of a good program, right? No one's mm -hmm. goofing off. There's no you can look around these guys. Their eyes are all forward. They're all on the next drill. They're all listening to their coaches. Um you when you go to camps and you see other like other other programs like this, oftentimes kids will be goofing around in the back of the line. They won't be taking things seriously. And um, I think I think you're you're seeing kids more and more sold into the program. And I think that's an encouraging thing. I like it. They're locked in. We're locked in. We hope that you guys are locked in with Knowles 24-7, both on the YouTube, the X's and Knowles YouTube, because we are going to be, it's going to be a deluge of content. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that, you know, end of January, February is the slow content season. Not here, because we never stop working for you. We love you. And that content is only going to intensify both in quantity and importance. The only way to get it all, Knowles247.com, half off, half off an annual subscription please sign up we are going to be here we're going to be breaking down spring practices we're going to talk honest to goodness padded up football i cannot wait we like listen some people take off during spring ball not the x's and Knowles triforce no 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 no. Uh, we lock in we are ready to go our tour of duty is done and we are ready to perform we love <laughs> you guys we will be here uh to break down all your video needs as always Interact in the comment section, refer us to your friends, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We love you. Spring starting. Keep chopping.